What's up guys, this is Matt and today I'm coming at you guys with what is hopefully going to be a pretty helpful video. I've shown you guys with numerous builds that if you're willing to go used you can get amazing performance for a very low price. And just as a quick example, my $200 used part build actually outperforms my $400 new part build and it includes the cost of an operating system. Though these builds are cool and all, the fact that I buy these parts used makes it very hard to replicate them, and though the point of those builds isn't so that you will go out and get the exact parts and build the exact PC, if you do a little bit of research and put a little bit of time in deal hunting, you can pretty easily make a PC with similar performance to the ones I've built in the past. So something I've found, and others have found this too, is that by buying an older OEM system like a Dell or an HP, you can get a really good base system to upgrade into an amazing 1080p gaming PC. So the systems I've found to be the best performance for the money are the ones with second generation Core i processors, usually the Core i3 and Core i5 processors. This is because these are both decent processors for 1080p gaming and most of these systems come with a Windows 7 COA sticker which you can use to activate Windows and upgrade to Windows 10. Now when looking for these systems you want to make sure of a few things. The first and most important is that the system is a full size PC and not a slimline or small form factor one. This is because with these small form factor PCs they only accept low profile GPUs which are usually both lower powered and higher priced than regular full size cards. Not only that, these PCs usually use non-standard PSUs which means upgrading to a more powerful and reliable power supply is usually impossible. The next thing is making sure the PC has room for your GPU. Search up the PC you're planning to buy and make sure it has both the number of slots, length, and height required for your card. Usually this won't be a problem with ATX motherboards, but BTX boards many times can accommodate moderate to large graphic cards because of the flipped layout which is a problem I encountered with the $100 gaming PC. An easy way to know if the PC is ATX or BTX is to look at the back. If the expansion slots are on the bottom and the motherboard I.O. is on the left, it's ATX. If the motherboard I.O. is on the right, it's BTX. Some systems also have an inverted motherboard layout, so it's the same as before, just flipped. So other things you want to look for is that it's a complete system. You want at least 4 gigabytes of RAM, ideally 6 or 8, but you can always upgrade in the future, and at least a 250 gigabyte hard drive but ideally a 500 gigabyte one. A great example is the base system I picked up for the $200 PC I recently did. It had a Core i5-2400, 6 gigabytes of RAM, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and an ATX layout all at under $100. Now where can you find these PCs? The best place to look is eBay. Look at the auctions and organize the results by time ending soonest. Usually buy it now sales aren't going to be the best deals just because if it's a really good deal it's going to get snatched up pretty quick. But it doesn't hurt to look at buy it now sales too. Check frequently and don't bid until the last few seconds to avoid driving up the price unnecessarily high. It may take a few weeks to find the deal you're looking for, but like I said, if you look frequently, you're sure to eventually find a good deal. I'd try and spend less than $100 on the base system, but upwards of $120 is fine. Next thing you need is to get a GPU. eBay is again a great place to buy one, but forums like the Hardware Swap subreddit are also great. When looking for a card, make sure to look up its benchmarks before buying and check if it produces the performance you want. AMD's HD 7770s, 7850s, and 7870s are all good 1080p cards, just make sure you get at least 2GB of VRAM for games like GTA 5. Trust me, 1GB just isn't enough anymore. Aim to spend $60 to $80 on the GPU. Now finally, the last thing you need is a better power supply. EVGA 400 or 430 watt power supplies are good for these budget builds, but make sure the power supply you're buying has the connections needed to power the GPU you are buying, otherwise you may need to buy separate adapters to power the card. Aim to spend $20 to $30 on the power supply, just make sure to get a highly rated, reliable unit. This you can buy new because they're usually always on rebate. Once you have that, you really have all the components you need to put together a decent 1080p gaming PC for under $200. I have a couple videos about actually assembling a PC, so I'll link those down below, but my biggest tips would be to try and be in a static free environment, take your time, make sure no cables are near fans, and have fun. PC components are more durable than a lot of people give them credit for, so don't be too worried or stressed about damaging a component by touching it funny. Also, you will in many cases need to make a bootable Windows flash drive using another PC to install Windows on your new PC and use the code on the COA sticker to activate it, which is pretty easy process. I'll put a link to a guide on how to do that down below. 
In terms of performance, it all depends on the parts you get, but my $200 PC plays GTA 5, Overwatch, and Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor all at 1080p high settings 60 FPS. It has an i5-2400, 8GB of RAM, and an HD 7870 2GB card. So as you can see, putting together a good game PC for under $200 really isn't that complicated. Yes, it does take time to find the right deals, but it's all worth it in the end, trust me. So yeah guys, this was a video that has been a long time coming, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment which use parts you found for good deals down below. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.